All right, well, I, uh, I started my religious life in the Catholic Church. It was all in Latin, and it seemed very strange. You know, they, they dress strange, they talk strange. Uh, then I, and I was also in Catholic school, which was, seemed pretty strange too, compared to the kids that went to you know, normal school around me. You know, had to wear special uniforms and all this. So that was my introduction to religion. Uh, being a child of the 60s, upheaval was the, 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 the word of the day, uh, you know, by the time we were becoming mature, growing up. And I, like so many, did the drop out, turn on, tune in thing, kind of got carried along by the uh, drug revolution and all that. But I must say, there was an element into it that wasn't just hedonism. There was kind of a search involved there, too. We wanted to find the truth. We had come to sort of presume that... Uh, the 1960s world we were in was, uh, you know, um, what I'm gonna say, Ozzy and Harriet, you know, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't real. And I, because I was from an alcoholic home that didn't look like that at all. So running away and finding, you know, the meaning of life and all this was very important to me. And I did it in Hawaii. I had also made sure, but the thing of it is, is when you, when you leave Catholicism behind, you don't realize that uh, the Eastern religions are, are very different in their overall nature. You know, the pantheism, the worship of creation, the ideas about good and evil and things like that. I, uh, I had nowhere to go. I was emotionally ill, really, from drugs. And all I knew to do was the Our Father prayer. And on some cliff on the big island, you know, alone, you know, destitute, I would just say the Our Father prayer after I would do my yoga, of course, and all my other, you know, mantras and things. I would throw the Our Father prayer on as a, as a, you know, a, a, just a, you know, an add-on, I guess you'd say. However, I started to see something very different about the Our Father's prayer. For instance, when I was doing my meditating or my mantras or my uh, things like that, I was, I was told to understand that everything is God. The ocean is God, the rocks are God. You know, you're God, I'm God. And so I would, you know, say those affirmations and, you know, not too convinced. And then I would say the Our Father and then everything switched. Our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy kingdom. Forgive my sins. Sins? You know, we'd, I'd walked away from all that. And now, I, and now through the Our Father, that one prayer, I was getting doctrinally straightened out again. And so I, would, I was kind of waning on the, the Baha'i religion and the Eastern religion, the meditations and the, all the hoopla, reading Buddhism, uh, Carl Jung, you know, memories, dreams, reflections. I was just like many searching. Well, one night hitchhiking, I got picked up and, uh, uh, and I, by a fellow and he says, well, I, I'll take you where you wanna go down the, down the coast. But uh, I, got, I wanted to stop at uh, the Baptist church for a little Bible study we're having, you know, a little, a little service we're having, a Wednesday night service. And, there's, and there is refreshments. I said, say no more. Let's go to church. You know, here I was with my frock and my, you know, my flowing robe or whatever I think I was wearing. And I'll be darned, in that church service, which was full of, to me, extreme nerdy people, you know, the pastor, you know, I, I mean, had a suit on. And everybody had like beehive hairdos and you know makeup. It just it just was very foreign to me. And yet, then they started to have an altar call at the end of the uh, of the little boring church service. And I thought, well, that's different. I never saw that in, in Catholic school or Catholic church. All of a sudden, I felt something, and it was very real. And I looked. I said, what is that? And I, I looked up, I, it felt like a light, you know those light they, they searched the sky with, you know? It felt like it opened up in the ceiling and was shining on me, except it wasn't light, it was like honey or goo or oil or something pouring onto me. And I wasn't on drugs, I wasn't high, I'd stopped all drugs. I said, what is that? And I, I went, it's the Holy Spirit. I knew it was the Holy Spirit. And I'm looking around, anybody else getting this? What I'm getting over here? No. I could tell they were sort of pray, praying for the, the lost kid in the corner. You know, and that was nice. I appreciate that. But I was getting bombed. I mean, almost, in, almost incapacitated to where I thought, 
this is, this is beyond, beyond. And I don't know who these people are, and I, but the power isn't coming from them. I knew that. It was coming directly from, from God, from Jesus and the Spirit. I thought, wow. This, and, 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 he, and this was during the altar call. So the pressure was on. You know, am I going to raise my hand? I think I was raising my eyebrows, like too proud to raise my hand, but I was really getting affected. Well, I came back the next night, you know, because they had a every, service every night, right? I came back the next night, and I actually did raise my hand. I did go forward. I was waiting for the same thing to happen, and it didn't. So I went forward, and I got my, you know, I think I, they gave me a Billy Graham uh, question and answer book. I knelt. I accepted Christ. I, I said the prayer they told me to pray. And I didn't feel much of anything. But the, the damage or the, or the wonder had already occurred. I, I, w I was, I, I knew in that one second that maybe even, maybe probably even the, the parishioners of this kindly little church had not experienced what I had already experienced. You know, I thought, I have just been inundated by the power of God, the love of God, washing me clean. I said, I said, now what? You know, so anyway, long story short, now I look at my life and I'm, I'm, I'm the biggest cheerleader for church you're gonna meet. Because in the context of the Christian community, one's actual life gets, gets straightened out and that same Holy Spirit that originally felt like buzzing oil, dr invisible oil dripping on me, it, I've come to know as part of the Trinity. And uh, uh, that, that Holy Spirit has directed me personally to get out of the things that I've tried that were sort of parachurch or this or maybe extreme, I thought cutting edge, ended up being kind of cultish, you know. Uh, after many personal failures and, and things like that, I have landed in a healthy church, which I thank God for. I thank God that it's where that healthy church is also where I want it. I choose to live because I'm a surfer and I love Kauai. But um, I, I see the kingdom of God in very real terms now. Uh, and, uh, and I'm very grateful for it. And I, I, I want everybody to get the value I do of being in the Christian community at the, at the local church level so that their life will be blessed beyond what they could even imagine.